Hello again everybody. So here we are on a new vehicle project. Starting to work on this Grand Cherokee. It's getting a little confusing when I say I'm gonna go work on the Jeep. I gotta start referring to them as the TJ and the Cherokee or something like that. But I've got parts coming. I was gonna work on the truck today, but FedEx delivered my master cylinder, but they didn't. They just said they did. So now I gotta wait four business days to argue that and then get Rock Auto to send me another one. So more delays on the truck so first thing i'm starting on this grand cherokee the seat's kind of stuck in the high position i don't know if you can tell here but there's the ceiling and i'm short so i'm going to loosen the seat up try to tip it back get into those motors underneath and see if i can get the motor unjammed so it looks like you just have two bolts at the back of the seat and then two at the front so I'm going to bust those loose and see if I can get in here. Okay, so trying to figure out which motor it is. I believe it's this one right here. And I believe it's just this screw right here is jammed up. So I'm gonna go see if I can get a wrench or something to get onto that and see if I can jam it free. So one of the first things I'm gonna do here on all these screws that the motors slide on, I got some slide lubricant from the camper slide from our R-Pod. I'm gonna lubricate it with all those first and see what that does. Well, so far I'm not having a lot of luck here. There's two motors that control the up and down. It looks like one of the motors is activating, but the screw is seized. That it turns to actually drive the back of the seat up and down. The front motor, I can hear clicking, but it's not actually activating the motor. So I might have a bad motor and a bad switch. Or maybe it's just that screw seized on one motor and one bad motor, but... I'll look online to see if there's a way to get these out easy. Looks like there's a pin pressing one of them in and then two bolts. So I'd have to get that pin pressed out to get the motor to come loose. So I might have to do that and then try to play with it on the bench, see if I can get it to unseize. So that'll be a tomorrow thing though. Okay, back out here to do a little playing around with this thing. Had to get me a little pipe wrench to try to get on that shaft to try to spin that screw. So I'm going to try that and see if that does anything with this motor. Well, maybe I needed a smaller wrench. And we just took the seat out. So I'll flip it upside down and work with it this way. Okay, so this made it a little easier to get to. You can see this is the screw that this motor rides on. So there's a front 
and a rear I was able to get my pipe wrench on there now and get them to turn about a quarter inch turn so they're at least not seized and then I switched the wires between the two the rear one would make noise but not actually rotate the front one wouldn't even make noise so I figure I'll switch the wires if the rear one still makes noise I know the switch is good and then I'll switch them back but if it doesn't I know I have a bad switch and that's the problem with the front one so now I got to put it back in and see what it does and I did kind of booger up these threads a little bit with my pipe wrench so I got to file out and I just filed those down I'm gonna go ahead and put some more lube on those too and we'll see what happens here okay seats back in and connected so I should be able to activate the front vertical motor and it should make the back one go on at this point if the switch is good and it does not so I might have a switch problem so let's put it back and that was there much easier to see when it was on the bed of the truck in that put back in well now neither of them work well poop so I wonder if cranking on those screws jacked it up See, I think the switch is working because you can hear this control module clicking. Yeah. So that would mean it's the motors. And that's the part you can't you say it's hard all, to find? All I can find is used ones. Yeah. But I know how to take the seat in and out now. Now, could you go to the junkyard and test theirs out and see if they move and if they do? Yes. Take the parts off of it? Yes. Okay. Balls. So it doesn't go up and down or forward and backward? It goes forward and back. But it just and the tip back tilts. It does not go vertical. Okay. Like you can put your hand on the rear motor and you can feel it inside that motor trying to kick. So it's just like that screw's jammed. Yeah. The front one you don't feel anything. So it could just be a dead motor. Well, this rear one's trying to go. So that shaft is just seized. The front motor doesn't want to go at all. So I think I've got one bad motor and one seized motor. Well, no matter what, I'd need at least one motor. Problem is I couldn't find new ones online. All I could find was used, like on eBay. So I might call around this week, see if I can find a junkyard where I can just grab a whole seat. If I can find one that's working. If not, I'll order some eBay parts. For now, I'll go ahead and bolt the seat back down and move on to the next thing. Alright, so taking a little time this afternoon to work on the Cherokee again. It's got a few little weird electrical things. So when I was driving at home, I had two different times where it beeped and the ABS light flashed off and on. Then the speedometer quit working all the other gauges kept on but the speedometer quit the AC quit and the turn signals quit all at the same time and then after a minute or two they all came back on together if it was just the speedometer and the ABS light I would think a wheel speed sensor or something but the fact that the AC and turn signals coordinated with it I'm gonna go down the route of a ground or something so there's a couple ground cables on the engine I'm gonna go and pop off replace and then I'm gonna take all the other ones off and clean them up So I got one ground cable off, kind of soaked in oil pretty well. I'm gonna just replace this one. There's another one I'm gonna show you here. You can kind of see right here. And it goes back there and mounts to the injector. It looks like it's intact. I don't really feel like pulling that injector and that's tight back there. 
So I'm gonna skip that one, but I'm gonna clean all these others up. You can see like this one here, it's hard to tell with the shadows, but it's just covered in grease and dirt. This one here has the same thing. And over on the driver's side, this one here, same thing, covered in grease and dirt. So I'm gonna bust all those loose and just clean them up, put them back together, and then replace that one. And then once we get all that together, I'm gonna take this for an alignment in a couple days. So I'll at least see if it has any more issues or not. So I'll knock that out real quick. So I got all the ground saw cleaned up and reattached. But next on the list will be the alternator. I've got one to order, should be here tomorrow. So throw the alternator on. Then next week I'm taking it to get an alignment and new tires on. And then at the end of the week, taking it to a Jeep place to get the front differential rebuilt. Then once I get all that done, we'll see where we land with this. So hopefully the grounds helped. If not, I'll dig deeper once I get my scan tool. So we'll see you next week. Well, we just got back from our camping trip. So back to the real world, back to work. Not much to do today. I'm gonna go ahead and swap out this alternator though on the Cherokee. And then Tuesday, taking to get the alignment, get tires this week and get this thing on the road. Oh, and then also a truck update. I've been waiting on a part from Rock Auto that FedEx lost. That part just showed up, so then I can also get back to the truck. They tighten that cable for sure. There you go. You weren't quick enough. This definitely doesn't have as much room as like your Jeep does. Yeah, yeah. you lose some room with the V8. Yeah, the Tahoe, the base engine's a V8. This one, the base engine's a straight six. Well, isn't that pretty? Yes, it is. <laughs> Looks a little nicer. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're back on the Grand Cherokee today. I got a mountain of parts that have all came in that are in the back of it right now. First thing I'm starting with is the power steering pump. Did the alternator last round and power steering pump still making noise too. So I'm gonna put that on. I was gonna go do the hoses too. I still am, but the way these hoses are routed, you have to take the air box out, which I've already done. And it looks like I'm gonna have to take the grill cover off as well. One of the lines goes up into a little cooler that's up in front of the radiator so i'm gonna have to pop that out and then get all this stuff swapped out so that's all i'm working on at the moment after that there's an abs issue i'm gonna look at i'll explain that later i'm gonna put an ignition switch in it to see if that helps any of my random electrical issues and a window lift motor as far as part exchanges hopefully that wraps up all the parts then i'm just gonna have one issue with a fuel smell in the cabin that i'm gonna have to work into but we'll cover that as we get to it as well. So you start tearing in stuff like this and you learn a lot about a vehicle. It's like this one has obviously had some love tabs at the front, took the front bumper off. And you can see this has been banged around a bit. The reason I was getting in here is this piece right here. This is where your power steering return line goes. A little cooler for the power steering fluid appears, but it was not bolted down in here. This was just flopping around loose. So I'm gonna tighten that up while I'm in here as well. So I got the power steering pump and both hoses already on. The next thing I was gonna do, I'm gonna have to postpone a little bit. The ABS light's been coming on. I put a code scanner on it. It's getting a hydraulic pump failure error which read up on these, it's kind of a known issue. There's this 
control module right here for the ABS system. Apparently the connection point to it at the corner will get a bad solder joint. You can just take that off and re-solder it and it takes care of it. But you need like an inverted Torx socket to get this off. So I don't have the right bit to take that off there. So for now I'm going to jump to the next thing. I'm debating. I got to do a window lift motor and the wheel hub bearing. I might start with the window lift motor. I'm not sure I feel like dragging my jack out and jacking this thing up today. But so I'll move on to window lift motor and ignition switch. So I'm going to remove this door panel and get the window lift motor out of here. I'm going to have to take it all apart again later though because the front speakers are blown but not a priority to get it driving. Also I'll show you on here. There's a lot of clips like this and the whole door is kind of loose. So when I take it apart I'm going to have to take pictures of all the different clip styles I need and if there's any broken tabs that I'm going to have to go junkyard for. So I'll tear that apart and see how quick I can get it together. One of the two to go. The GM method is much easier. They have access holes and 10 millimeter bolts. This has spring clips that are hidden. It's just not cooperating. Nope. Pressure. Ooh. Got it. Yay. Okay. I got the window lift motor in. I think it was a pain in the butt the way they do some quick release clips up there. But it's in. The rest of it wasn't too bad. Probably gonna call it a day at this point. So if you look on this door panel, this thing was rattling around. On all these little clips, all of them are broken except one. So that means I'm gonna have to run to AutoZone, get a bunch of clips. The other door is just as rattly, so I'm going to need those clips too. Then there's a torque bit I need to be able to get into the instrument column to get the ignition switch out the rest of the way. Then up front, this ABS module, I'm going to have to buy the sockets for the little inverted Torx to get that off so I can re-solder that. And then on this front, There's this piece that's loose that just isn't bolted in. So I'm going to have to get a screw to hold that in. And then it looks like they curved it or something. So you can see this nice piece. So there should be three bolts in it. There's one. So I'm going to take this one out and get the others. And then I've started bending it a little bit back. It's close, but at least on this side. So the inner fender liner hooks onto this and it wasn't hooked up. So I'm going to have to get this all bent back where it was supposed to be and then bolt it on there properly. So, bolts, some tools. Oh, and since I had the door panels apart, I figured I might as well go ahead and put speakers in it. So I'm going to hop on Crutchfield and order a set of speakers for the doors too. So that'll be it for this for today. So get more parts this week and start up hopefully one evening this week if the rain holds. And the speakers are for you more than the kid. <laughs> yeah. Shanna said I should save some money and not do the speakers, but I need to do something for my Jeep or something. But I was like, yeah, if I have to drive it, I want good speakers in it. So, <laughs> so I'll do that anyway. But yeah, other than that, be later this week. I'll pick it up from here. So this is the ABS module from the Cherokee. It's factory sealed. Had to cut it open. From what I read in the forums, the problem is these two contacts back here. So yesterday I got this open and I re-soldered those two joints. So now I've got to reseal it. So I'm just going to use a combination of Permatex real thin and then some super glue and then clamp that together and let it dry.
Okay, so Grand Cherokee repairs are moving forward. Show you something here real quick. ABS module is back on. So now that that's on, I can get the air cleaner, everything up front here will be done. This little box is $200, I believe, on Rock Auto. So hopefully soldering it saves me $200. If not, oh well, it happens. But moving to the back here. Inside this thing, it smelled like gas. Especially at the back cargo area, it seemed worse. So I just pulled the spare tire to take a look and see if there's anything going on there. And there is. That's going on. So that was just laying there. So at some point, someone cut this out to get to the fuel sending unit. And then just set it over and left it. So I got to figure out how to seal that up now. That'll be later this week, but... I at least know where my problem's at. Okay, so I'm in the middle of replacing the wheel hub bearing on the Cherokee. As always, I'll state, these are not how-to videos. This is me tripping my way through things. Luckily for this, it's the same setup as my Wrangler, so pretty easy. But I won't show the whole thing. But I figured I'd drop in here and show you a little bit of the progress. Everything is apart down to the bearing. I just got to get the three bolts to hold that in and this thing's going to go back together. So it should be a pretty quick job this morning. That hub bearing came off way too easy. So I'm going to go ahead and guess that it's been changed at some point. Hopefully it was still bad. If not, then I'm into carrier bearings, which I'm hoping that's not the case. But I'm gonna slap it all back together and we'll see. So this side's all back together. Just waiting on Shannon to get home to hold the brake so I can get this thing torqued to spec. Then I'll put the tire back on and this will all be done. So then the only thing left on this thing, all these clips were broke on the door panel. That's why that was loose. So I ordered more of those. When those get in, I'll just slap the door panel on. The door will be done. And then the ignition switch, I was suspecting maybe issues with it. And then I found this. So, I don't know if someone cut the wrong thing, if it caught on fire or what, but this is not good, especially the bare wire. So, I ordered another harness with longer leads on it and then better crimping connectors. So, that'll get here this week. I'll crimp that on and then should be ready to fire this thing up and test drive it. Fun part. And here's my new wiring job. I got the lockable connectors and the new switch. So I just got to get this mounted up in here and try it out. Let's see if it works. Well, that works. The window works. Door locks work. Door's not rattly. Yep. So door's better. <sighs> that turns on and off. Okay, so I think I'm done for this week on this. I've not fixed the gas tank issue yet, but I'll go ahead and do a quick recap of everything I've done. Starting up front, 
So it now has a new alternator, power stream pump, and power stream lines. I also got into that ABS module, resoldered the connections on that to see if that takes care of my hydraulic pump ABS light. This front grill was also really loose where they tapped into stuff. So I added more bolts to the bottom that were missing and rebent the metal inside of it to get that all squared away. So this should rattle less. So that should be the front end here. Also got the wheel hub bearing on. I'm still not 100% certain that's gonna take care of the noise, but I'm hoping I get lucky. If not, it'll be carrier bearings, which is what I was thinking to start, but hopefully it's just the wheel bearing. On the interior, the doors don't rattle now. They're actually on solid. Both doors are together, way better than they started. New speakers are in it. I also got the ignition switch out of it. Got the new one in and put a new ignition switch harness on it. So hopefully that takes care of some of my electrical issues. If not, we'll go from there. And then I at least know where the smell's coming from in the back, so it's gonna be a matter of just figuring a solution out for that. So that'll come in time. For now, I'm gonna go take it for a test drive and see how it does. Okay, well, test drive went pretty well. No check engine light, no brake light, ABS light, speedometer didn't turn off, AC didn't turn off. Not that it won't later, but at least for now, it appears to be working. Still a little bit of noise in the front end I don't like, but I think it might be better with the wheel bearing. I do have some aggressive all-terrains too, so that makes some noise. But definitely drivable. I just gotta get the gas tank cut out, closed in. And then the other thing I gotta figure out, if you can see, that dome light in the back's on. Some days it's on, I've messed with the doors, the top glass. Some days it flickers on and off, some days it's on, some days it's off. So I gotta figure out what's going on with that. But other than that, this thing's ready to be driven. So we'll just start driving it and see what comes up. But other than that, that's gonna wrap up this video. Here in a few weeks, I might do a little more tinkering with this, but for now it's good so we'll move on to the next projects i'm going to start doing some upgrades on the camper get things like that done and we'll see you around with the next projects